Hey everyone, I'm back again. So this time I'm talking about chart patterns, right? Chart patterns are really an essential tool in uh, what can be considered as an essential tool into trading on a technical analysis, especially on technical analysis. You know, a lot of traders use chart patterns to identify potential trading opportunities, whether it is a continuation of the trend or a potential reversal of the trend. Okay, so you can use chart patterns in many different ways. Uh, chart pattern is really formed by how price moves, how it reacts to um, resistance levels, whether it's horizontal or diagonal resistance or support levels. And then you use it to you know, identify where they could get in, possibly maybe even a little bit earlier than they would normally have. Okay, so what we'll do today is we'll look at the top five chart patterns that you need to know. These top five chart patterns are the chart patterns that I use as well. And why it's quite important to identify, you know, or to limit down the chart patterns that you really need to know is really because there are so many, so many different types of chart patterns that if you do have this up on your screen or you know, in front of you, you can get confused. You can be looking for many different things and then end up not entering a trade at all, right? So it can get quite confusing. It can be overwhelming if you do try to identify all the different chart patterns. So what I've done, I've identified or I've filtered it down to the top five that I use and the top five that you could explore to integrate into your own trading strategy. First off is the head and shoulder, right? The head and shoulder, very commonly known as the head and shoulder pattern. It indicates a possible trend change or reversal, right? These patterns consist of the three peaks. So being the shoulder at the side, the head right at the top as a peak, and then the shoulder again as the second or the third peak, right? So you got the head and the shoulders, two shoulders and a head. Very important to identify a neckline as well. Right? The neckline is a horizontal line here that connects the lows between the shoulders. Okay? So why is it important to you know, not just identify the head and the shoulders? The neckline actually gives you the possible entry level. So sometimes if you have the neckline being way too low, very big dips and then a head and then a big dip again and then the shoulder, what happens is that the neckline is so low, there's no levels or no potential for you to enter a trade. So it's very important to identify the neckline just so that you know when you can get into a trade and possibly once it breaks, trade it down to the next support level. Okay, so one of the things that I do look for is a head and shoulder pattern. Ideally, it should also occur at a resistance level. All right, inverted head and shoulders will have to occur at a support level. A head and shoulder will have to occur or should occur at a resistance level to show that you get the bigger potential for the big downward move. So that's number one, head and shoulder. Number two, the double top or the double bottom. All right, the double bottom, what we have here is price testing a support level twice. All right, it's quite simple. It comes down, it tests the support, it bounces slightly, it tests the support again, and then the next time it breaks above that previous high, you can see or you would expect for price to continue trading to the upside. Right? It's a reversal pattern. The double top or the double bottom is um, looking for that big reversal. Right? Traders tend to enter a long position when price breaks above the resistance level of a double top pattern or double bottom pattern, right? So we call this a near-term resistance. You look for it to test once, fail to break, no, no candles closing below the support level, bounce, close, no, no candle closing below the support level again, breaks above the interim resistance or that near-term resistance level, then you can expect that big upside towards, possibly towards the next resistance level, okay? So, Number one, head and shoulder. Number two, the double top or the double bottom. This is the double bottom here. I've got a double top here for you as well. Where price comes up, it doesn't always have to break above that resistance. It can test, comes, comes close to the resistance, test that level, 
comes back down, forms that interim support level or that near-term support level, bounces back up, tests that resistance again, and then when it finally comes back down, it indicates that you know sentiment of the market doesn't seem to be able to break above that resistance, indicating that downside potential. Okay, take profit levels would normally be at the support level. You know you can at some times see price break beyond that, but as a reasonable target level, the next support or the immediate support level would be a good target level. So that's two. The third one will be a triangle. There are many different types of triangles. There is the ascending triangle, there's the descending triangle, and there's a symmetrical triangle. I like the triangle pattern because it identifies that continuation, right? The continuation of trend. And it's quite relatively easy to find because you actually see price finding a near-term resistance and it's actually pushing up. You can see price actually testing higher doesn't form a new low, doesn't form a lower low, pushing up again, a higher low, pushing up again, a higher low, pushing up again. That shows a pressure, right? a pressure, a consolidation and a pressure to push higher. And then when it finally breaks above that near-term resistance or the top of that triangle, you see, you could see a big explosive move to the upside. So this is the ascending triangle. Then we have the descending triangle where price is trading lower, right? A lower high and then a lower high and a lower high again with that horizontal support. Once price breaks beyond that point, you could be looking for that big downward move towards the support. Usually we'll see this after a big move, a retracement and you see price retracing back down lower and lower without forming that new low, right? It's right across then you see that, or you could be anticipating a continuation of that con big move to the downside or to the upside. What might be a little bit more tricky will be the symmetrical triangle, where you actually see price not consolidating either towards upside or to the downside. It actually squeezes down, right? It actually squeezes down from the top downwards and from the bottom upwards, a lower high, coming down and a higher low going up. That shows that compression of price, right? Compression of price. And in this case, there is both the upside and the downside potential. Typically, no, most people would say a symmetrical triangle, you could be looking for either a downside or you'll be looking for a downside depending on what the previous trend was. You know, if it was coming down, you look for continuation. I would say that, or how I approach this is with a symmetrical triangle. I'll be looking for either a break to the upside, which we don't see, or in this case, a break to the downside. What I mean by a break is for the candle to break out beyond the lines and to close outside of the lines, okay? So in this case, we see this pushing down, take profit as usual at that support level. Your stop loss could either be right at the top or to be safer it will be right at the start of where the triangle begins naturally if the triangle is a big huge symmetrical triangle from you know over a long period of time then you would want to put it a little bit nearer but if it's in the near term like this then you could actually afford to put your stop loss a little bit higher so that's the third one the symmetrical triangle the ascending triangle and the descending triangle what you notice all, from all these patterns is a either a test and a failure to break a support or resistance level, or in the triangle sense, it's a consolidation, a compression of price before it breaks a you know, breaks out of the compression or breaks out of the consolidation for that big significant move. Next up is the flag, right? The flag. Usually, it means a continuation of the current trend. Flag is a rectangular pattern that occurs after a sharp price movement. Remember, a sharp price movement. So you need a sharp price movement. You have a bit of a rectangular move, although it's to the downside in this case, because remember how a flag looks like. Right? This looks like a flag pole, and then the flag pointing to the downside. And then you see price, once it breaks out of that flag, you're going to anticipate a continuation 
So you're not looking for this to break down. Or right? if it does break down, then you would not, it would not be a flag, it would just be a um, trade to the downside. But if it does this and it breaks up, that's a flag, a continuation to the upside. Okay. And lucky last, this is the one I like the most, is the engulfing pattern or the engulfing candle. Right? It's a reversal. It's a reversal, a possible change in trend where you actually see a small candle, right? A small candle or a candle. And then the next one actually goes beyond, covers up where it engulfs the smaller or the previous candle. So you see that the big green candle engulfing the previous move. Naturally, this would be stronger on the bigger time frame where you anticipate a stronger move to the upside when you see a bullish engulfing candle. Or if it's a big red candle following a small green candle, you say that's a bearish engulfing candle. So there you have it. What we have is the top five chart patterns that I look at, the head and shoulder or the inverted head and shoulder, the double top, the double bottom, the triangle, ascending, descending, and asymmetrical or symmetrical, the um, engulfing, and then also the, what was the last one? The flag. Okay, so those are the five. But remember, with chart patterns, with chart patterns, there are always disadvantages. Actually, with every approach, there's always disadvantages. It's very subjective. Everyone looking at a chart is going to give you a different view of the chart. Everyone looking at a pattern is likely to draw a different pattern as well. So it's very subjective. Um, there's no hard and fast rule uh, of how it should look like. You know, there are textbook examples, but price could move in a little bit of a skew. We might see more tails. We might see um, a skewed head and shoulder pattern. So it is a bit subjective. There are false signals, right? So you don't want to enter a trade just because of a chart pattern. This is a technical analysis. You do want to consider some fundamental analysis as well. You want to consider why is price moving in a certain direction. So there could be false signals. It is overused, right? It is commonly over, um, commonly approached by a lot of traders. So it could end up becoming slightly of a self-fulfilling prophecy where you know you look for a pattern and then it does happen, but it not move, might not move all the way to where you expect it to, right? Because it is overused. There are a lot of people identifying similar patterns based on the charts. So just be careful with that. Um, there is limited indicators. And what we mean by that is that if you look at the charts only, looking for a chart pattern, you know, you don't want to just do that. You want to have, you know, your oscillators, you want to have your momentum indicators, you want to have your um, fundamentals sentiment indicators as well. Put all that together just so that it gives you more information, right? Beyond just the chart patterns. And lastly, it can be time consuming because if you are waiting for a chart pattern to develop and to play out on the H4 timeframe, that could take days. That could take maybe even a week. It does take time for a chart pattern to develop. So it can be time consuming. You know, what you want to do is possibly approach or to identify a possible chart pattern. Have that as your on your watch list. Consider that, but also identify shorter term trades to um, take advantage of, you know, opportunistic trades to take advantage of before or while the chart pattern is being developed. So Want to do this quick video for you guys about you know top five chart patterns that you need to know. I hope you found this useful. If you like the content, if you like the information, you found it useful and it's going to help with your trading, please do help to like and subscribe on this video and for this channel. Um, and if you have any other feedback or any other requests, do let me know. Uh, put it into the chat, put it into the comments. I'll be happy to take them on board. So for now, trade well, trade safe. And I'll see you again. Take care now.